The story so far. Before you know it, waves overwhelm the viola. You see, through the trees, a red glow. Let's head towards the flare. You find the hunched form of Dave. You're not even sure that he's still breathing. Oh, God. <gasps> One year ago, four colleagues of yours were working aboard the cruise ship Prospero. When the ship sank, they were washed up on a remote island. Three of the four came back. In this clearing is what looks like an oldie-timey paddle steamer, you see a black peak, black smoke. This island appears to be volcanic. Life's a game, the world's a stage, and we're all merely players. What do you see at last, right? Um, there's uh, we're on a volcano. We're on a volcano. Oh, I'll slide down the tree. We're on a vol. It's a volcano. There's a volcano. I mean, I mean volcanoes. They like you know most of the time they're a lot of smoke. Okay, lot of, mm. lot of smoke. But ex- extinct volcanoes still smoke. A lot of lot of red. Right. Oh, a lot of red glowing, smoky. How far? Where there's smoke, there's lava. How far away is it? Uh. A couple of kilometres, probably, in the middle of the that's, island. That's close. Oh, that's close. <gasps> yeah. Oh, that's close. And I start to hyperventilate. <laughs> Just when you thought the day couldn't get any worse. Glug, glug, glug. Okay, so the way I, st- I think... Right, we're on a volcano, so wherever we're going to go, we're on a volcano. Mm. This seems a fairly good base for operations for now. Maybe there's something in this strange thing that we can salvage the stuff on the... The, the shore, maybe? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Well, well, if there's a volcano, Natalie and I found a cave. Yes. In the sea. Oh, yeah. There's a bit of a swim. Natalie's not exactly a, a mermaid. Um, I mean, rude. <laughs> but, but, sir. Uh, <laughs> top half. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you concussed, Chris? Are you okay? <laughs> He's gone mad. I give him some more rum. How much rum did he drink? <laughs> it turns out yes. the rum was really useful. We uh, we found a cave <laughs> underwater. A um, bit of a bit of a struggle for Natalie. We're going to lie, but um, if we're going to get burnt alive by lava, being in a watery cave might be a good thing. Was there a lot of space in the cave? No. No. We didn't go very far into the cave. So when you say it was a bit watery, but we... oh, it was um, flooded. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So now it's stand. No, not no, that no, we found. No. But oh. if, if, if the volcano starts to erupt, oh, we can run for the cave. Oh, I see. So ah. we could at least go under the water and that's it's a good air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like we can stay there until the air runs out, or or until we the drown. lava superheats the water in the cave and boils us alive. Mm. Well, <laughs> everyone's a pessimist today. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie, you worked with the children on the show. <laughs> yeah, probably wasn't the best uh, best place for me. Really. Yeah. It's a shame we'll never get to see their, their play. Yes, Oliver. <laughs> That's <laughs> classic. Lord of the Flies. <laughs> I was born to be Nancy, anyway. Should we, um, should we go on this, this paddle cruise then? Because I really want to have a look. I was going to say, if you want to have a look, mm. I'm quite happy to see if... Like, it's clearly unstable and, um, I know, ethereal, maybe? Mm. With it disappearing... I, Gonna put, you know what? We're stuck on an island. I'm just gonna compartmentalize that okay. for a uh, second. Yeah, like uh, there's a lot of stuff I just can focus, do. Focus. I can't work out how boats disappear. Okay, I'm. I mean, I'm a good magician. Don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. but so can you stop it if it stops starts disappearing again? I uh, no. Can we have stopped no, this? But no, no, because what I do isn't real. But that actually happened. Oh yes, I think. So why don't I go on the, the, the on the boat? Yes. I want to disintegrate the, the boat. Yeah. Because I'm quite quick and quite lithe, and if anything happens, I can jump to safety off the side. Tap dance your way to safety. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, sure. that's, a, that's a very good point. I take my tap shoes off. I would like to use the branches and stuff to create some sort of... Sh- I don't, I'm not confident as being inside in case more of it disintegrates and we go with it. So I'd like to use the outside of it, maybe the paddles of the roof, to kind of give a basis and then just build some stuff so we've got uh, something that butts up against mm-hmm. against the um actually the paddles 
Could I see if I could shore one of them up so it doesn't spin round and then create a shelter like on one of the big paddles so we've got some shelter that's off ground level because I don't like those snakes. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Roll intellect. Oh, good. This is actually my stat. Watch me fail. No shelter for... uh... Mm. That's all right, that's all right. Nine, ten. Oh, so no shelter for us. Oh, wow. It works straight away and reliably. Tell us uh, how robust your shelter is. Oh, it's so robust. Um, (laughs) So I'm going to put uh, a load of uh, the kind of the large sturdy branches underneath it. So there's like four... Uh, kind of things shoring up the bottom of it so it, it won't go down and then uh, so actually we've kind of got some shell there for in the daytime it's like downstairs living decking. quarters yeah that's that's a decking uh, and uh, I will I, I will use maybe some like some of the thick vines and stuff just to kind of lash some of these together and then on the upper bit between the, the, the like the paddle which will be the floor and the paddle which is the roof I'll use a lot of kind of Fronds and nice things just to try and make it a little bit more uh, comfortable rather than just being on a big lot of uh, metal. Um, and I will uh, also just like uh, lash up something, uh, use some of the smaller sticks to make like a makeshift ladder that we can use to climb up to the up one and then pull up at night to stop other things getting uh, to us. Um, and maybe, again, some like vines and leaves and stuff to make... Uh, like a, a a soft kind of like a like a, a viney bead curtain <laughs> down the front, so people, things can't see in. So there's a little bit of mm-hmm. uh, of, of like a, a second wall. Yeah, the the long edge can be covered. The short edges yeah. won't be. Right, I think this sounds like it's going to take you some time. So oh yeah, 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 yeah. for a while. You're going to be at that till nightfall. That's cool. Oh, hey guys. <laughs> oh my God, Sergeant's you're rubbish, alive. I hate it. <laughs> Can we do something to um, lift his spirits? Yeah. yeah. So, to remove Dave dis- Dave's despair, you need to make some sort of concrete progress towards being rescued. Okay. Because I have my tinderbox that I rescued. Shall I give it to Dave? So mm, to cheer make me a fire? up. <laughs> so he can make a fire. Yeah, so he can, can make, make a fire. fire. But I can't make fire because I can't do anything that involves rolling, can I? Uh, making a fire, I don't think would necessarily oh, be brilliant. brilliant. But Especially not if we have the material. Have the but you yeah. don't have firewood. There's okay. some really good firewood over there. If there's a pig on it. <laughs> yeah, we could go and get. We could go and get it, right? Mm-hmm. Like if there's more than one of us. Yeah. Defeating a pig seems eminently possible now that we've dealt with crocodiles. And I would say lighting a fire counts as concrete progress. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 It yeah. can be a signal, and it'll keep you alive. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, we're going for that firewood then. Yeah. Okay. So, Dave, you're not completely out of things at this point. Like, you're not completely immobile. Like, yeah. But you, your kind of listlessness means yeah. that you you can't contribute in particularly helpful ways. But no. you're still you're still in the game, and you can still talk to people and that. Kind yeah. Of thing. I feel like I just I point towards where the yeah. wood is, like Literally. the ghost of Christmas Future in the Muppets <laughs> Christmas. <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. There's firewood over there. Let's go in. Okay. Let's go and get some firewood. I feel mm. like I want to bodge together something that's going to be more reliable than a stick on the, the way there. The stick doesn't work, I can stick, tell you that. pointy stick <laughs> doesn't work. Um, some kind of... We could try and kill the pig and then we could cook it. Oh, and yes. It. Well, I could make a slingshot. Yep. <laughs> what have I found? Um, Maybe we've got some, like, you've got a bit of vine from when mm. we were going through the forest. Yes. And uh, is, anybody, is anybody wearing an elasticated waistband? I, I am, yes. Yeah, because that would be comfy. Yeah. At least four of them, yeah. <laughs> I've probably got a hair tie on my yeah. wrist. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah. so as we're scrambling through, gathering stuff to make a weapon. All right, let's Brilliant. see how reliable this slingshot is. Roll intellect. Okie dokie. Got plus one intellect. Okay, uh, that's uh, six, eight, nine. Either it will work straight away or it will work reliably. Mm. Maybe you need a few goes. Mm. Is that what work straight away means in this context? Uh, work so work straight away would be you can use it straight away, but it might like break. Oh, okay. that's it. We really need to work this one time, exactly. right? I can project it. <clears throat> right, I'm going to go for it working first time, but it might break. Okay, cool. I'm imagining yeah. you almost like putting this together as you run. Yeah, literally into the woods. <laughs> yeah, only on my elastic yeah. on my pants. So yeah, great. <laughs> anyway, unnecessary. <laughs> I didn't need that. Uh, so I'm gonna we're gonna arrive at Pig Gate, and <laughs> I'm gonna fire one. It's gonna hit the. Are both pigs still there? 
yes, they're still in the area. Okay. Yes, but because Dave's told you that you, that they're there, you don't have to have an open confrontation with them. You you can plan a different approach if you want to. Yeah. Like, how would you Stealth. like to do this? If it's going to work first time, but I might not get a second shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I should go for the pig that's on the. Yeah, wood, and right. the smaller pig probably smaller is a bit pig. more manageable. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna fly. Wow, but what's gonna happen with the other pig? Is he gonna? Okay, I guess we find out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, me and Alex will try and like yeah. be a distraction to the yeah, other yeah, pig yeah. if it shows up. Okay. Cool. I'm gonna fire a shot off. Great. Okay. So you're not in immediate danger, and you're trying to drive the danger away so that you can get the firewood. So please roll intellect. Nine. The you avoid the danger for now. Great. Yay. We're good at this. <laughs> so we we're, just, we're just building up a collection of animals that are all going to try and gang up on us and kill us later. Great. Great. <laughs> Super. Yeah. So there are still dangerous pigs in mm-hmm. this bit of woodland, but you, you're. What do you what do you shoot at them? A pebble? Um, no, a big rock. A pebble. <laughs> big old rock. Okay, and uh, it, where does it hit the pig? Straight between the eyes. And it squeals and uh, runs off oh. and crashes off through the undergrowth into the forest, no leaving one. the little pile of no brushwood. Dinner, but... mm. Mm. Yeah, leaving cool. the pile of brushwood uh, untended. I guess we gather. Gather that wood, take you back gather to the wood. beach. I'll keep look out for pig. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can hear them still moving about and snuffling in the forest, uh, but they don't bother you yeah, right okay. now no. uh, on your way out. And I feel like also we're like, if we need to go back and try again to get one for dinner, we could. Dave, what what are you feeling uh, there on the beach while they're while they they've left you? They've gone into the forest that caused you so much problem, so much trouble. I'm just staring at the uh, horizon, sea line, and just thinking nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Pointlessness of existence. <laughs> Jesus Christ, oh my god. And you're think- still thinking of that when three sets of soft footste- footsteps uh, emerge back onto the, onto the white sand. I don't even turn around. <laughs> Jesus. Armfuls of brushwood, and the three of you can build a fire. Hooray! Oh, I feel much better now. <laughs> Great. Does my morale go back up now? No. <laughs> so, how do I get more? Somebody has to uh, help you with that. You, so cross out despair. Yeah, I can't be despaired anymore. Yeah. No. So to, talk us through like what are your feelings as they start to build the fire and it. Oh, I start to think maybe this is going to be okay. I've got fire, I like fire. That's nice. <laughs> Don't know what else is going to happen, <laughs> but at least I'm not dead. Mm-hmm. Should we gather around the fire? Yeah, because I feel like gathering yeah. around the fire, taking stock of the situation, being happy we're not dead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. Being glad that we're all largely unharmed. Mm-hmm. Once the fire is lit you all suddenly realise that since, since the storm, since the, sh- the viola went down, it's just been constant danger, adrenaline, yeah. mm-hmm. despair. Uh, and this is, the first, <laughs> this is the first moment since the storm hit that you've had a moment to reflect and a moment where you weren't in immediate danger. Alex, uh, is, uh, what's the weather looking like? Well, it, it was drizzling earlier, but it's kind of dried up, which is nice. And there aren't any... That storm that came out completely out of the blue that no one could have predicted. <laughs> um, literally nobody. Um, that, that doesn't seem to be coming back around again. So I think, I think we're in the, the clear weather-wise for a moment. Oh, that's nice. Um, um, maybe we can get some, like, take it in turns to get some sleep around the fire and just in for a dry night yeah, would be nice. that'll be good. It's warm now, which yeah. is nice. We can dry out. Dave, did, I didn't know you did, you. did you get a flare gun when you left? No. When we, when we crashed? No. I do. Did you see? I didn't see a flare. I mean, I was looking out to sea. So <laughs> yeah, we saw we saw a flare from was it was it from this direction? Yeah, it was from this direction. Yeah, it's what led us here. Yeah. So like, that's lucky, isn't it? Mysterious. So. I mean, maybe someone else is on yeah, the island. Yeah, maybe someone else is on the island. Strat? Could be Strat. Could be. Oh, he could be looking out for me. Yeah, maybe he's like a little guardian angel. Oh, that'd Gonna be have nice. a little quick look around. But why wouldn't he say hello? All right. <laughs> yeah. And how would he know we were here? This is very mm. strange. It's I made quite a lot of noise. I was shouting piggy, piggy, piggy quite loudly. <laughs> you are one to do that. But we couldn't hear you from where we were, so I don't, you know, mm. I don't know. This is a mystery and a half. It is a mystery, also, but I'm really glad we've talked about it. Mm-mm, I, I feel better. I didn't get anything when I came off the boat. No, neither did I. have got a tinderbox. Have you got anything yeah. else, guys? Oh, we, oh, I've got a compass. Can I have a look at it, please? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I'll, I'll pass oh, the compass thanks. over to you. Um, I'm going to try and use the compass and the position of the mountain to roughly gauge where we are on the island 
You can do that. Yeah. So I kind of, I know roughly the angle where we're at and where we would need to go to get to the other camp. So. It's a long way away, guys. We have not landed in a good place. But that means in the morning, maybe we Mm -hmm. can gather ourselves together and set off Mm -hmm. in that, knowing that that direction. Yeah. And keep our eyes peeled for food because we'll get hungry and Mm -hmm. thirsty. Well, there's some pigs in the forest. Yeah, right? I don't like those pigs. <laughs> Danger food. <laughs> <laughs> I will gladly go and kill one for us. <laughs> uh, who's going to start the chain of morale boosting? I don't think it should be me. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to. I'll roll. Okay. Who whose morale are you trying to boost? Uh, you Dave's. Want at once. Okay. So uh, do I get a plus one because we're all together? Yes. Huzzah! So plus two overall. And I'm going to say, I'm not really hungry yet. Okay. <laughs> but no, it, yeah. tomorrow morning, on the boat. I'll well yeah. be. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a plus one to my roll. Yeah, so plus plus one for your current morale and plus oh. one for your element. So, so plus, plus two. two. Great. Wow. Great. Oh, oh, didn't even need it, uh-huh. friends. That's a 30. You both gain one morale. Oh, yes. Me? Yes. You're so good at cheering up. You cheer yourself up. Oh, cheering others up makes you feel good. <laughs> Shall I try and help someone? I'm by a fire. I'm really loving it now. <laughs> yeah, you're in your room. That's yeah. time. Yeah, who are you trying to boost? Um, I didn't need to I give will, you those dice. Nice. Let's just do a little circle boost, so I'll boost Alan. <laughs> Filth. <laughs> That's what they call it. Because <laughs> yeah. um, you had a little you had a little talk about the Tinder box. Yeah, yeah I did I, I thanks for bringing that for me. That was really lovely. <laughs> Pleasure. Um, so I get plus one for being at one morale, mm-hmm. and plus one for being near a fire. Yeah. Eleven. We are Beautiful. smashing it out the park. You both gain one morale. Yeah. <laughs> what a lovely fireside chat. I want to notice so nice. that Dave Ooh. is wearing a jumper that says, would a hug help on it? And it's light pink. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's, it's really morale boosting jumper. I think it makes sense that, that I try and boost Alex's mm-hmm. morale. If we either. didn't, that'd be really <laughs> unfair. Just, just, can I boost my own? Just my <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay, guys. Okay. So you also get plus two just for being at two morale. Oh, that's yeah. nice because Quite I'm not in my cheery, element. I'm with other people. <laughs> Ruining your life. <laughs> Maybe during this I'll learn to like social activity. <laughs> okay. Three, seven. <laughs> We're not very good at this. Alex gains one morale. Oh, yeah, oh, you yeah. need to gain one, so. But I've stressed myself out <laughs> by having conversations. You've tried very hard and we appreciate That's it. That's okay. Look at that, we all feel great. Hey. Considering the situation, I'm my morale own. is surprisingly oh, high. Oh. I'm feeling chipper. <laughs> now it was evening and it's probably getting dark, but I, mm. I don't feel like this is a particularly good place to go to sleep. I suppose on the beach. I think if we could take mm. it in turns and yeah. if, the okay. fires, if the fires get a, you, we can keep the fire alight. Yeah. Keep the fire going, mm. keep watch, yeah. sleep the night. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just go in pairs, maybe. Like mm-hmm. a couple of people yeah. get a couple mm-hmm. of hours and then we okay. swap over yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah, might we know. spend our time on watch doing mm. something? Because I'm thinking yeah. if I could get a stick, I might try and see if there was a way that I could like whittle it into something that we could try and kill a pig or some fish with. Because yeah. I really am thinking about my next meal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. That does make sense. Yes. What would you whittle it with? So I think I'm going to go and find some kind of rock or something. Mm-hmm. With a, sh- a sharpish edge, mm. or a couple of rocks where I can try and sharpen one. And nice. I've watched a little bear grills. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, some little flint napping, lovely. Uh, yeah, great. Oh, we are going to need fresh water at some point yeah. as well. Yeah. So bear that in mind too. Sure. Mm-hmm. All right. Sharp rock and pointy stick are yeah. not difficult to find. Mm-hmm. Uh, roll intellect. See if you can make a sort of reasonable spear or javelin. Uh, can I have a plus one because everyone's together? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Nine to eleven. Oh, I'm rolling like a champion today. It works straight away and reliably. Yes. Yes. Right. Reliable fish spear slash pig spear. Meat is on the menu. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm a make taco. <laughs> yes. <laughs> fish tacos, they're delicious. Mm. Anyway. Can I... Where, where are we? We're in the palm forest. Can I make a little kind of water carrying contraption for where we... Out of fallen coconuts. Mm. So I knock a hole in. <laughs> So we can collect and carry water as and when we find it. Just a couple of those. Yeah. Sure. Just, so. Just some like cups. <laughs> I'm making yeah. cups. <laughs> yep. You're so welcome. Roll intellect. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> okay. Oh, how can this go wrong? <laughs> You run out of something vital before you can finish. <laughs> it's a fail. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I've had this idea, uh, but there aren't any coconuts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's it. Because if there were coconuts, we'd have something to eat and yeah. drink as well. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, and and also, uh, as you're sort of looking around for something to bodge into this, uh, you realise that the fire is burning low and that you've basically, like, over the course of this night, mm-hmm. uh, you use up all the firewood. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. And if yeah. you want mm-hmm. another fire tomorrow, you're going to have to find more. Okay. 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 Yep. Any more night business? <laughs> night business. <laughs> night business. I'm. Um, I want to see if I can create something that will make the fire more portable. Um, so we can carry like a. I'm basically trying to fashion a torch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a better idea. Um, so yeah, if we so that we can carry the fire with us. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna Maybe out get, of a, a stick and some of the, the, what you're wearing. Yeah, rip your yeah. sleeves off. Or so. if we're near palms, so I'll probably mm. use some palm fronds. Great, because they've got oil in them. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Palm oil. <laughs> palm oil. Yeah. yeah. That's oh, how sure. it works. You're yeah. destroying the environment. This look needs more. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think the environment's very much trying to destroy us right now. So, <laughs> waging war on the environment. Roll intellect. Okay, that's good. I'm minus one in that. Um, I'm not defending anyone, so no. I can't get a plus one. Oh, that's a fail, and it's a five yeah you you use up your vital resources uh, to do this I think you actually um, you use up uh, the tinder in the tinder box so you still have the flint it, yeah. it'll still make sparks okay. That's right. okay. if, you get, okay. if you can get kindling from somewhere else yeah. but the tinder box like on its own Mm. Uh, is it it's, just a box it's just a box with some flint and steel in it oh. that could hold water a small amount <laughs> You've made in a, a cardboard box <laughs> brilliant and it'd be a metal tin yeah it would be yeah. a metal tin yeah mm. lovely highly successful really really good night guys <laughs> <laughs> I made a spear yeah, yeah we've well got done. a really good spear and a sharp stone now as well yeah, yeah. yeah. to sharpen it we had, and the idea of cups <laughs> and the idea of cups the we concept now, of cups we are now all aware of cups so cool <laughs> Welcome one and all. You're listening to Merely Role Players, where theatrical people play role-playing games. I'm Matt, your host, and I hope you're enjoying Act 3 of Prospero and Viola. Let's take a quick break from this act to peruse the program, shall we? First off, a quick correction. In Act 2, I told you to go to alexanderpankhurst.co.uk to find all of Alex's upcoming stand-up dates. The actual address is alexanderpankhurst.com. If you re-download Act 2, the link in the episode description now goes to the right site, even though I still say the wrong one, and I've re-upped that link in this episode's description as well. Give the site a visit, and if you head out to catch one of Alex's sets, don't forget to tell the people on the door that he's the one you're there to support. Voting has closed for the Audioverse Awards, and I'm looking forward to seeing the results. And voting should now be open for the Discover Pods Awards. It's scheduled to open today, the 4th of November, but I'm recording this a few days in advance, so I can't quite be 100%, and I don't know who the final nominees are that we get to pick from. How amazing would it be if we were one of them, though? You should go straight to awards.discoverpods.com and see if we are. I certainly will be. Voting is only open till the 18th, so by the next time I talk to you, the winners will have been decided already. Finally, let's all give a big round of applause to Natalie's Ragged Foils Productions for wrapping up the fantastic first season of the Ragged Scratch podcast. Six episodes, 12 works in progress that are well on their way to becoming full-fledged audio dramas, and what sound like big plans for season two. If you're not already subscribed, check this episode's description for a link and go binge season one straight after this. In the interests of further ramming up your podcast queue, I'm going to leave you with a trailer for another programme we recommend. Brits on Bikes is the story of a dangerous cult on the rise in a parochial British town and the kids who get themselves mixed up in it all. It's a particularly British take on the Spielberg, Stranger Things, Kids on Bikes in the 80s genre, and if you liked our second season, Five Stage of Rescue, it's going to be right up your street. After this, we'll rejoin the crew of the Prospero as they investigate the mysterious steamship. See you back on the island. In other news, it appears that Marsh Haven is on the up as those good eggs over at Mondo Corps have done it again by announcing an Hello. 150 new jobs once they open the doors to the Phoenix Plaza. Hello.
Various boutiques and offices, the plaza boasts a new exhibition space. Yeah, Famous Pete Mummy, and a much needed cash injection into local secondary school, Anna Kingsford College. Hello. Look, if you can hear this, then maybe all is not lost. Marsh Haven is not the place that you think it is. It has secrets, and there doesn't seem to be a sane adult in a hundred miles of the place who wants to know. Look, just spread the word. The kids are doing the best they can, but the country needs to know. The world needs to know that... Brits on Bikes is an actual play podcast powered by the Kids on Bikes RPG. Listen on your preferred podcatcher and follow us on Twitter at Brits underscore bikes. Keep on biking. Nat, you had something. I, I was going to just offer to oh. be helping with that, but I was probably going to have a closer look at the ship first and do a bit of, like, yeah. touch it. Yeah. Sorry, I got what? this, I got this, this is fun. Okay, okay, so Nat and Josh, you both wanted to investigate the ship. Mm-hmm. Yes. 100%. Tell us what that looks like. Okay, so I take the sequin waistcoat off, <laughs> put it to one side, yeah. take the tap shoes off, yeah. take my socks off, fold them up carefully and leave them in a pile with my waistcoat and my tap shoes, and I make my way inside carefully. We need to get you some new shoes, because... <laughs> I mean, I, when did you last have your tetanus shot? Because this is metal and old. I, mean, and I, I, I don't know how long ago it was, but we'll be careful. I'll find something. Maybe maybe somebody can fashion me a nice pair of like slip-ons or something. Okay. Or yeah. Crocs. Yeah. Um, Made out of crocodile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not Crocs! <laughs> Darky, not Crocs. <laughs> so you, you can make your way in reasonably easily by uh, just working your way up that rock formation that it's beached on. Yeah. Um, and you can either go all the way to... Uh, what used to be the bow and get in the big hole that opened up since the disintegration or uh, about um, a little a little closer a little closer to the ground as you go up that rock formation you find like the the actual entrance to the kind of the deck house uh, where the gangplank would have gone if it was Mm -hmm. moored up Mm -hmm. so uh, how would you like to enter I personally would yeah. probably stick to the door because okay. it's closer to the floor. <laughs> Just be like, right, I yeah. know ground. Ground is safe. Uh, and start peering through the, the doorway and seeing what I can see. Okay, and Josh? I'm going to go rocks because, yeah. you know, it's yeah. higher up and yeah. uh, I fancy myself a climber and I'll get a better vantage point from up there. Nat, as you peer in through the door into the deck house, you sort of look uh, left and you can see Josh. You can see Josh silhouetted against the sky. Uh, <laughs> 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 I nearly fall. Uh, and Josh, you can look down into the uh, cross section, the mm-hmm. superstructure of the ship. Mm-hmm. There is there's rust everywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, the wood of the decking still seems to be in reasonably good nick. It looks like it was well kind of varnished and seasoned. Um, there are vines growing around and over and through everything. Uh, you can see now that over the, the other side of the ship to where you uh, arrived in the clearing, actually a tree has partially grown up through it. Uh, so mm. there are kind of branches edging into the, mm-hmm. into the structure. Mm-hmm. There's, there's not, there doesn't need to be any stuff in here. It seems to be just like the shell of a ship. Um, but there is kind of, uh, down at the stern, like the lowest point where anything would have rolled to mm-hmm. is slightly dimmer. Mm-hmm. And, uh, that looks like it maybe would be worth investigating for more stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to use this opportunity to pull away a bit of a thicker vine if I can do and fashion it into some form of bandana, which <laughs> I will wrap around my head and tie up behind me <laughs> and try and keep the sun off my forehead as much as I can. Yeah. Uh, how uh, how dark is it down in the stern? Can is, is there enough? Is it light enough outside that there's enough light penetrating that we can just about make stuff out? Or yes, yes yeah, you okay. can make out outlines of, of vines and of um, the uh, the shapes of old steam pipes uh, running up and down the walls uh, and that kind of thing. Um, uh, an old ladder, uh, stuff like that. Okay, um, I'm going to start heading to, down towards the stern. I might kind of. Like knock on some of the old pipes to hear them ding, but also to listen out to see if I can hear anything else scuttling about in response to that. <laughs> uh, you hear the odd scuttle, like this thing is here in the woods and it wouldn't be 
uh, uninhabited mm-hmm. by things, but they you don't hear the sounds of anything like uh, large or threatening. Good it's scuffles, not bad scuffles. Scuffles of things like running away from you that uh, seem skittish and nervous. Okay. Like, you reckon it's probably like mice or something along those lines. Maybe small lizards. Nothing dangerous. Okay. Um, what you do find uh, as you head down towards the stern, just tucked, it seems to have just rolled into one corner and got partially wedged behind a pipe, is a uh, is a human skull. Okay. And one side of the skull seems to have been caved in by a blunt object. Could I have used this opportunity to pop up behind her is that an ability or is that only something that can happen when danger is approaching you can do that <laughs> you can do that you don't have to roll for that okay yep so uh, I appear behind her and sort of very tightly look over her shoulder over Nat's shoulder and say what's that <laughs> skull <laughs> slap you around on the shoulders and <laughs> oh my toned shoulders yeah. <laughs> there's a skull there's, there's a skull and it does skull. not look like it has ended well for this skull Oh, can I take the skull? Yeah. Take mm-hmm. it. it takes a little bit of... You've got to struggle a bit to unwedge it from the... Oh, sorry, I thought she was holding it. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, you can get mm-hmm. it. I was going to say, before I do that, it wasn't holding up anything really, really no. important. It wasn't structured. <laughs> okay. Load-bearing. It was Load-bearing, exactly. <laughs> take a look at it. It's been caved in at the back. Yeah. By a blunt object. Yes. <laughs> what do you think did it? Uh, uh, I mean, presumably some someone that could hold a blunt object, I guess. I mean, that doesn't look like any kind of animal mauling, unless it was somehow when the ship appeared here, the person fell on a thing several times. Se- several, several times. I think. Mm. I think this this was murder. I assume this is a human skull. It is it a human skull. Be, okay. How how old do you? I mean, is the skull clean? It, it's yellowed by the yeah. sun. It looks like it's been here a good long while. Maybe yeah. probably as long as the ship. Should we show this to the others? I think we should. Did yeah. you find anything else? Yeah, well, I've, I've, I stopped to look at the skull, and mm. that's as far as I got before you I was kindly the, came in and jumped up behind me. I was on the top deck, and I saw yeah. you through a hole, and I yeah. thought I'd drop down and spook you. Yeah, generous of you, thanks. Let's go outside. Uh, or do we want to finish looking in here first? Yes. <laughs> and I give oh, her the skull. Great, thanks. Okay, <laughs> sure. You can see that there are there are various bits of pipework that look kind of rusted enough that you might be able to break them off if you needed bits of metal piping. Um, that ladder looks like you might be able to get it off the wall, although you're not sure how strong it would be once you once you did that. As you you investigate the the structure, um, coming back walking back up the slope from the stern. Uh, into the uh, the wheelhouse on the top deck where the pilot, sort of at the back of the top deck where the pilot of the ship would have sat, you find a rusty, old-fashioned, non-functional, but still mostly intact-looking radio set. <gasps> mm. Well... We should definitely take that with us as well. I that looks th- useful. So. It's it's built into the equipment oh. of the wheelhouse. Okay. But you, if you had the requisite knowledge, if you wanted to roll for it, you might be able to kind of pull bits out until you can kind of make a portable version. Okay. But at the moment, it's built into the structure. Right. It, looks, it looks pretty old. I, yeah, it does. I mean, I you know, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to twiddle some knobs anyway, see what happens, but... Yeah, so flakes of rust fall away as you okay. twiddle the knobs, um, and you there's no kind of there's no static sound as of yet mm-hmm. from the from the equipment. No power. Uh, no power. Mm. Um, but the the knobs do turn, um, and nothing seems to have been badly damaged except by age. Mm. Okay. So it's just old. Yeah. Okay. You Not know, secretly a snake. So no. that's good. You know who else is quite old. Hmm. Yeah, we should, we should, I'm we should. sure he'll know exactly what to do with this. He had an old ham radio that he used to play in the dressing room, and yeah. maybe it's something that he knows about. Okay, well, you know, that's clutching at straws, but something will... Let's give him a purpose, is yes. what I'm saying. <laughs> something to He's do. upset. Yes. Yeah, no, you're right, you're Time right. I need to do something about him. Focus, yeah, something to focus on, yes. Let's go. go. I'm, I'm gristly and tough. <laughs> Nothing of eating me. Starkey, what have you been doing? While, while Strat's been building his shelter and these two have been exploring the structure, what have you been doing? I've been uh, patrolling the area and seeing, making sure it's safe, no critters around, maybe looking at a bit of food, a mm-hmm. little, little light lunch I could 
brick together? Uh, if you want to look for food, you'll have to venture a little further afield and mm. uh, fill in a little more of the island. Sure, I will Let's definitely start to go into, deeper into the bush. Okay, uh, deeper into the bush in search of edible things. Roll instinct, please. Um, <laughs> Could I, like, draw animals to me with my voice? Uh, or, like, or like notice what they're eating or something like that like roll, as I'm going. roll this first to see if you can find some animals to, eat uh, and to do things with plus instinct that is a 10 nice. okay so you f- you find some animals that you can potentially lure with your voice so what, what sort of what sort of animals do you think you, you were looking for I think probably like some sort of birds or monkeys yeah. or something like that put up in the trees okay so still in the woodland or do you want to change the terrain Oh, well. uh, I suppose I'm going to go a bit further. No, I don't think we're going to the volcano. So I'm going to go <laughs> east of where we are. Yeah. So parallel to the coastline. Sure. So maybe the yeah maybe the tree the trees get a little thinner or sure. thicker or yeah yeah whatever. sure yeah. Uh, we maybe enter into a bit more of like a grass yeah grassy sort of yeah or like or nice. scrubland or something like that. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Cool. So we're in some scrubland. And there are some sort of small game animals that you think that you could mm. tempt. Uh, what what do you think they are? Oh, you, but you said birds. So birds or little mammals of yeah. some description. Yeah, bunnies. Yeah, it, yeah, sure. Yeah. But there is also some sort of danger in this territory that you'll have to overcome before you can uh, catch these animals for food. Sure. Uh, you get to decide what the danger is, though, because you rolled so well. Uh, swarming insects. Okay. I want to stumble across a um, sort of like one of those beehives, like the, the ground mm. bees. You know, mm. I sort of maybe I've stepped on yeah. something, or oh or I can see I'll see a swarm in the distance. Yeah. So because you rolled well, you don't stumble into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You, as you're surveying the area, you see those small game like, animals. A meerkat. Yeah. You see those birds. You see those bunnies. Uh, as you emerge into the scrubland, uh, you know that you could tempt them, but you also you zero in on on a couple of the trees in this area. Uh, you can see hives and you can see the slight black cloud of specks of swarming things around them and that you know that you'll have to be very careful sure. in this area to attract the animals you want to and not the insects that you don't. Well, having seen bees, I've got a bit of a sweet tooth. Mm. I want to go and get some honey. Interesting, okay. I'm going to go and try and... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to try and get... I'm going to do two things. Okay. I'm going to... With one of the hives, mm-hmm. I'm going to try and collect the hive... And and start beekeeping. <laughs> I think we're here for a long haul. <laughs> Lovely. So I'm going I'm to make a little hive, mm-hmm. little beekeep. The other one, I'm going to smash the shit and get the honey out. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I think for the hive that you want to collect, yeah. you're you're approaching it softly, with like, softly, softly, softly. You're planning your approach. Yeah. You're making sure to be very careful. So roll intellect for that. Please. Oh no. Mm, really, Matt? Intellect? Okay. That's that's a that's a six. Mark a fail. Unfortunately, no one can help because you're alone. Yeah, that's fine. So I, I go up to the the beehive, yeah. and I, I don't have any plan. My plan is to go up there and uh, and grab it. You go up. There. <laughs> you you grab that hive, and I go right. Here's my hive, <laughs> <laughs> and those bees aggressively defend their territory. Well, I'm going to sing them a song. <laughs> and I'm going to try and calm the animals. Okay, for the fail, sure. uh, you're you're going to take one off. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, does that take that? I'm at zero. You're at zero. I'm going to... I think I'm going to take a, an injury. Okay. Mm. You're very happy with yourself having grabbed this hive. <laughs> and you're thinking, oh, nothing bad can happen. I'll just sing them to sleep. But you realise immediately you should have sung them to sleep before grabbing them yeah. <laughs> as they burst out surround you the bees. The bees. <laughs> in a humming buzzing <laughs> cloud and you start to feel stings all across your shoulders the back of your neck, your forehead so uh, what the injury means uh-huh. is you are stuck at zero morale and can't regain more until the other survivors find a way to treat your injuries. Okay. So they need to find a way to treat all of your stick bee stings. Okay. Uh, and for now, you can't do any of the anything requiring a roll. Oh wow! You are, you're effectively you're immobilized, and taken out. I think you can get away from. You can drop the hive and get away. So you you drop the hive and you run and like you collapse into the scrubland. 
and the bees eventually realize that you're immobile and leave you alone and go back to their ruined hive. Sure. But you are in the baking sun, covered in bee stings, and for the moment, unable to move. There we go. Covered in bees. There we go. You've been listening to Merely Role Players. In this season, Vicky, Dave, Ellen, Alex, Nat, Strat, Starkey, and Josh all play themselves, sort of, in a game designed and run by Matt. Like most of our games, this one's powered by the apocalypse. You can find more games in this genre at apocalypse-world.com slash pbta. If you enjoy the programme, let us know with a review or rating on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, Listen Notes, or wherever you do your listening. You can also find us on Twitter at Merely Roleplay and at facebook.com slash Merely Roleplayers. Merely Roleplayers is an independent production in association with Blackshaw Theatre Company. Join us for more drama next episode. Yeah, here's a list of dangers that you can pick from or you can make something up. Sure. Wildlife, e.g. bears, moose, <laughs> crows, yes. Those crafty moose. <laughs>